Are you looking for some read aloud book suggestions for your late elementary school children? Well, I've got 15 of them here for you that my family has read and I'm excited to share with you today. Before we get started, welcome to my channel. I'm Lee from Little by Little Homeschool, and right here I share things such as book suggestions and curriculum and just the reality of homeschooling and just some tips and tricks and hopefully lots of encouragement for you. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you are new to homeschooling, thinking about homeschooling, or have been homeschooling for a while and are in need of someone to come alongside you who've been homeschooling for a while, I've been doing this for 11 years and I offer a course with one-on-one -on -one coaching where we get to get you up and running in no time and embracing and thriving in your homeschool. All right, let's go ahead and get started on these suggestions. I had my kids, their input, mostly my daughter and my boys are like, oh yeah, I think I remember reading that, so I'm gonna just go through. These are in no particular order, and if you're looking for book suggestions for younger elementary school kids, I will drop the video that I did for that in the description below, but also know that these book suggestions I give as I'm saying read aloud. So a read aloud is when mom will sit and read to the kids, maybe kids will take turns reading, but together you are all experiencing one book, sometimes read alouds might be like on an, an audio book and that works out really well if maybe, you know, kids are listening and they're nearby and, you know, you're cleaning the kitchen, that kind of stuff it works really well, especially when you have a bunch of little kids and you're trying to manage your time and get everything done. Just know that I share these as read alouds, but these are ones that kids can read on their own as well. Maybe you're just looking for some suggestions on what you can ass assign or get from the library for them to read. So I will list all of these books in the description below, but know that most of them can probably easily be found at your library as well, but maybe you like to collect books and like to have them all on hand. Half of these books are ones that we already own and the other half I had to get from my library so I can show you. So the first one is, I guess, so these are in no particular order. I'm just grabbing them from the stacks that are here. But Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim, I had to add this one because I remember reading it when I was younger and loving it, so I needed to read it to my kids. <laughs> say late elementary, I'm just, I'm conservative with my book lists and because of some of just the content some of the um, scenes and stuff that just can be a little tense um, that's why I kind of steered towards late elementary for this book all right um, Johnny Tremaine let's add in a historical fiction set right before the Revolutionary War um, stuff like this is really good when you have boys because boys love when there's a boy main character who's the hero and um, you know you can watch a progression of their character and just and all that kind of stuff so Johnny Tremaine completely a classic actually it's a John Newbery board no, metal <laughs> um, okay the next one so on the opposite end of like boy is the main character we have Secret Garden I picked this one up years ago in the like Target dollar uh, bin so this is a junior classic for the it is an adapted version it is not the original um, version by Francis Hod Hod Hodgson, Hodgson Burnett, Francis. We'll just go with Francis. <laughs> My boys weren't super huge fans of this. We watched the movie afterwards. They really, and we watched the movie for rats and any of these that have movies we typically would watch afterwards, um, but they weren't huge fans, but I wanted them to have some exposure to something. And I said, it, it's, it's not going to kill you to sit here and listen to this. And I would let them color or draw or whatever. Next book, My Side of the Mountain, um, Jean, Craighead, George, um, this is also the author of Julia the Wool's Newbery Honor book. My boys love this and I think that they, uh, we read it together, but then I think that I assigned to them to read it on their own as well. Really good, really good book. Um, other, I mean, great author. Other books on the far side of the mountain, Frightful's Mountain, they all like are kind of in a series-ish, but you don't have to read those other ones, but highly recommend My Side of the Mountain. Okay, the next book is one of my favorite authors and I shared a couple of hers in the other video that I shared with the read alouds. But it's Kate D. Camillo because of Win Dixie. Such a sweet book. Fun, funny, and just, I don't know. Yeah, uh, read this one. It's also a Newbery Honor book. I guess, there's, I guess we're going with those here. Um, okay, next one is The Prince Warriors by Priscilla Shire. This is book one. I don't remember how many books there are. I'd have to ask my daughter and she's not here right now. But it is a bit of, I don't want to say it's an allegory because maybe she doesn't mean for it to be an allegory, but there's definitely a Christian theme in this if you look for it. It's not necessarily something that's um, outright, but it is an adventure. They go into another world and there is symbolism in that. Maybe I should say, maybe it's a little bit more along the lines of like the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, how there is, you know, biblical symbolism for it. Um, but this is book one. Again, I don't know how many there are, but we read this one. Really good. The next one is Bear Call Paddington. 
I am gonna tell you my boys had mixed emotions about this one because they're like, it's a bear, like Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> so if you, um, the other video when I shared, I think we, we did read a Winnie the Pooh and they were a little like, eh, and then they kind of came around to it. Um, but anyway, again, there's of course, there's a movie about it, but it's just as, it's just as I thought it was cute and kind of felt like we need to. So let's just say when my boys kind of got to be later elementary, when my older got to be later elementary, was a bit more opinionated about books and about how I would make use of his time during his school time. And so some of these were purposely like to get him to slow down. Don't tell him I said that. Um, next one, Secret School by Avi. Avi became one of our favorite authors. And I, I still remember this um, two, two houses back or so. I remember getting a blanket out. We read this in the spring. And sometimes when you read books and then you see them again, they just bring back the emotions of that time that you read it so this one reminds me of that the kids just being younger was in the spring like may bring a blanket out under the tree and reading this and it just was a great i don't know just a good book and okay the great brain so see how i throw in some stuff here that my, my boys would be more more excited about um so the great brain is tom d fitzgerald age 10 the story is told by jd sometimes confused but always admired younger brother anyway there's just there's a school me the school message like he just does stuff that's fun and funny um the author is john d fitzgerald just a fun there's a there i don't know if there's a series but there is at least a couple of books that have to do with the great brain and we read the first one and then sometimes what you'll notice is that in a series you'll read the first one to your kids and then you happen to mention there's more or maybe you just get them from the library or you buy them and you'll find that they continue to read it on their own so that's been kind of a fun thing stout hearted seven this one i also remember so it says the true adventure of the sagger children orphaned on the oregon trail in 1844. so a historical not a fiction book historical non-fiction and it really opened my kids eyes to you know what life was like back in 1844 and kind of gave them pause to stop complaining about things in their life the Indian in the Cupboard. Again, I remember reading this as a kid, absolutely loved it. My kids thought it was so much fun. I mean, there's just, there's things that happen. It's funny, not necessarily a, a comedy kind of thing, but just the understanding, just to watch the Indian come alive and how he interprets and sees the world and just the emotions, a really good book. There's a couple of books in the series, but this one's the best one of them all. Five Children and It. I have no idea how I found this book, but it's by, uh, but it's by E. Nesbitt. Children they find in, in this gravel pit, they find a sand fairy and anyway, that they discover about wish making. It's just, it's a bit of a fantasy, I guess, but not like woo woo, you know, like, is that too weird? Anyway, um, my kids enjoyed it because they could kind of find themselves in each of the characters. There's a bunch of different kids, so they could kind of identify uh, each of them with a different character in the book. And two more here and one, I'm maybe three. I think I am missing one book that I was not able to get in time from my library. Next one, Pippi Longstockings. Longstockings, Longstocking, only one. She has one stocking. Um, she is an absolute character. This version is a little more young kiddish. There's pictures. Um, so you don't necessarily have to get this version. I don't, I don't, this isn't the version that I originally read to my kids, but Pippi is a hoot. She's um, funny. And so this is a great, a great book to find like, you know, to read to them and they enjoyed it. It was just was, it was just enjoyable. And the last one that I have the book for, and then I had to quick check my list and find out what's that last book that they don't have, but it is Matilda. This is probably one of my favorite movies. <laughs> is that funny or is that weird? But I think when I first saw the movie, I had no idea there was a book. Like I was, I lived in a different type of world way back then when it came out. Roald Dahl, who wrote Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and all those other books, um, Matilda about uh, a girl who has like some special magic that she can do and she just is so sweet and she's in a family that doesn't quite fit her and I won't tell you the end, but another great, great read for late elementary. That's my list and it is the book called Poppy, also by Avi and I, because I don't have the book in front of me, it's not jogging any memories of what it's about, but I believe it is about a mouse. Again, we really got into the author, Avi at that time, but Anyway, I hope that these were helpful, give you some ideas on just slowing down, incorporate some read alouds into your morning time and just enjoy uh, learning and reading books together and just having a good time. 
So if you have any favorite books that you've read to your late elementary school kids, drop them in the comment section below so we can put together a super huge list. And if you haven't already seen that video with the early elementary school read alouds, I will drop that in the description below. But thanks for watching this video and we'll see you next time.